Okay, here we are again with another quick tip tutorial, this time on live booleans, and we're just going to go through what they are and um, how to use them and just how they would sort of benefit you. So what I'm going to do is just go to a cylinder 3D, okay, and you should find them here on the top menu. I'm going to make that a polymesh 3D, okay. After that, I'm going to just, I'm just going to delete this one here, you don't have to worry about that. So here we have our cylinder. Uh, you can use any shape for this, but I'm just going to use a cylinder for now. I'm just going to rename that so we're not confused. It's always good to rename your uh, subtools. Next, I'm going to press W and I'm going to first action and press Control Shift D. And then I'm going to duplicate that. And then I'm going to press W to get out our gizmo and just kind of shape this. Next, I'm going to click on that subtraction piece there. And in case you're wondering, Live Boolean is right here. If you don't know where to find it, it's under Render and then Render Boolean and then Live Boolean. And if you press Shift F, you can actually see it here, right? You can actually see it live. Um, but if that's a little bit too distracting for you, you can press Shift F again and just get out, get out of that polyframe mode, right? So it's a little bit distracting for me, so I'm just going to move uh, out of that by pressing Shift F. Okay, we've got quite a few options here. I'm going to go down to Boolean, which is under Subtool, and then Make Boolean Mesh. Okay, so after you've actually done all that, you kind of found something that you like, you can make the mesh, right? And here it is here. It's called the U-Mesh Main. Okay, and that's a different tool. Okay, I'm just going to switch back to our cylinder here, and I'm going to insert another cylinder, or actually the U-Mesh that we just made. Right, and I'm just going to rename that, so the Boolean Mesh. So now we have that, right? We can actually use that. It's a workable mesh. So all I'm doing is I'm just going to the previous cylinder that we're using to cut through it, and again, using that subtraction mode, and then just moving it into place, right? Just trying to get it to an area I want. And now you can see this sort of faceting that's happening here. If I press D for dynamic subdivisions, I can actually go down here to Geometry, and you'll find um, dynamic subdivision right here. Okay, you can actually click on that dynamic button and you'll see the difference there, right? So that just, that's just going to smooth things out if you want that. And you can also have that in your Boolean mesh, right? So you can go to make Boolean and then dynamic subdivisions, okay? You can also click and apply here, but I don't like to do that because that makes it permanent. So I'm going to go here and click on dynamic subdivisions and then make Boolean again, right? Make Boolean mesh. Again, it's going to create a new tool. We can go to that tool. Right, and here it is here. And if we press Shift F, you can actually see, right, what it's been doing here. Okay, it's sort of stitching these pieces together here. Okay, just like that. And something I would recommend is that you would use a lower uh, mesh on your subtraction tool, just for, uh, it, it's just cleaner that way. But just so we can sort things out, I'm going to go to Z mesh here. I'm going to click on a few options. I'm going to keep detect edges, and I'm going to leave keep groups. So we're going to go to keep creases and detect edges, and I'm going to click on that Z mesh here. I would also change the adaptive size down all the way to zero, um, but it worked here, so it's fine. But as you can see, now we've got a you know pretty cl a clean mesh, right? We don't have to worry too much about cleaning this up. Of course, if you're going for game-ready stuff, I would uh, probably do a few more things to this, but for now, that's actually pretty good. So again, going back to dynamic, we can change the dynamic level on this. We can change the creases. Okay, I'm going to crease this and change the crease level down because right now it's a little too sharp. This is kind of what you'll be doing with live booleans, right? You'll be taking pieces and intersecting them and subtracting them and uh, unifying them, right? And then you'll be going down here to zero measure and zero meshing it. And finally, you'll go to your dynamic subdivision just so you can get sort of a workable piece, right? So now I'm here with the first piece that we got. I'm just going to scale this up and just rotate that and move it into place. Right, and then take another cylinder, okay? Scale this down, move it into place as well. And again, make sure it's on subtract. Okay, and I'm going to hold down control, click and drag, and then let go of control, and then continue dragging. And, you know, maybe you can create something like this, where it's a sort of a, a metallic piece using tools or something like that, right? So you can see the shape would ordinarily be quite a nightmare to create in ZBrush, but with live booleans, right, you can just do this. Right, and here it is. So pretty easy, and of course, after you've done this, make it a boolean, okay, and then... Uh, go to Z remesh to Z remesh this. If I press Shift F, of course, this is what it actually looks like. It's not a Boolean, or rather, it's not a uh, proper shape just yet. It's just a live Boolean, right? And we can, of course, adjust those shapes if we wanted. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as it is. So I'm going to go back here to Insert, and we're going to insert a, uh, well, anything actually, doesn't really matter. I'm going to go down to Initialize and make this a cube, okay? So a Q cube. And I'm just going to scale that up. So W, scale that up. I'm just going to hide these tools here so it's not in our way. 
Okay, and I want this one to be at the bottom and I want it to be subtract, but for now I just want to work on this cube and I'm going to come down here and actually make it 10, the resolution 10 by 10 by 10. That way it's uh, it has 10 polygons on each side, okay? So just like that, right? That's just there so we have a little bit more resolution. So what I'm going to do next is press BI and then IMM Boolean, right? So instead of sort of making your own shapes, there are booleans here that are already pre-made, right? So you can just click and drag, and I'm holding shift so it snaps into place, and I'm actually on the cylinder tool, right? So that way, that, that's our subtraction piece, right? So I'm just dragging this out here, yeah, just seeing what I like. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on subtract, right? So subtract on this one, okay? And as you can see, it's now subtracting from our cube, right? And I can just sort of play with this. Again, it's live, so we can move it around, right? See what we want, see what we like. Okay, so maybe you like something like this, but you say, you know, maybe I want this piece instead. You can, as you, if you have the gizmo out, you can actually click on the different tools and it will update as you go, right? So if I click on this one, or I click on this one, right? It updates as we move along. And I can just slide along like this as I have the gizmo out. So maybe I'll find something I like, so something like this maybe. Right, you can just keep it there and just do the exact same thing that we've been doing, right? Dynamic subdivision, make boolean, and yeah, we have it here, right? The U-mesh. Okay, and again, if you press Shift F, you can see what it is. So what I'm going to do next is just create this really um, sort of simple shape here, right? Just really quickly. And of course, you can make your own shapes and boolean these into the other shapes. So I'm just going to move this again with subtraction and just kind of place this right around the piece here. So again, you know, if you're making some kind of robot or just mechanical piece, you can easily, easily uh, bring out these pieces. And this was a very quick tutorial, and I might have sped through that a little too quickly, but uh, I think you guys get the general idea, right? You just bring something out. You uh, d you can either zero mesh it after you've done with the boolean, with the live booleans, right? You can unify them. You can subtract them. You can intersect them. Okay, quite a few things have been get down there, and that is pretty much the gist of it. There's nothing too complex about live booleans. It's just how complex you want to get with your subject itself, and nothing more to it. Uh, that's pretty much it. And yeah, you can also use this with Dynamesh. Something I didn't show there, but as long as you have um, a pretty good mesh, there you can just Dynamesh it with a high resolution, and it should be pretty good to go. So that is pretty much it, guys. I will see you in the next one.